Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the final, final part of Ender Lily, Quietest of the Night. Real quick, before we jump into this, I want to make sure one thing. In order to get the final ending, you must have the Luminous Aegis Curio, Illuminate Aegis Curio equipped. We're set up. We're as strong as we're going to be at this point, other than maxing out our level. Let's go. So for most of this fight, I am going to talk, unlike last time. Because last time I did tend, I tended, I tend to like to be quiet during boss fights because I feel like it's it's a nice thing to just let the bosses just kind of speak for themselves. All right, we took some damage there. Which sucks. There we go. So I'm using mainly Julius's super because what it does is it provides me a lot of crowd control for these fights. Because one of the biggest issues you'll run into, in my opinion, for these fights is just getting hit by nonsense. Because this boss just summons so many ads. My build is set up so that I can heal a ton. So that I don't have to burn my prayers too often. Although they will be, need to be burned from time to time. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Ow. Right, we should be fine there. Okay. We're chunking through. I think technically... Phase hasn't transitioned. Oh no, this is definitely phase two. I don't know when he went into phase two. So if you didn't catch this, because this thing is her mother, that's the Blighted Lord praying. You know, our prayers that have been healing us this entire game, that's the equivalent for the enemy. This might finish it.
It was as if I'd been in eternal slumber. Unsure if I was alive or dead. The days were filled with nothing but pain. When I awoke, I lay on a black pedestal. I felt a warm touch grace me. The tiny white priestesses were holding my hands. The same priestesses who were made to take on my blight. From nearby, I could barely make out the voices of the covered members. The blight transfer rite was about to begin. The priestesses, knowing nothing of their fate, nuzzled up to me. These children would be sacrificed to keep me alive. What was it all for? The time I spent with them was what truly saved me. If I am to pass on a legacy to these children, let it be one of hope, not suffering. But how, how is this happening? Could one white priestess alone have such power? No, that amulet. You made it whole again, all the fragments. All the shadows of our history, the unknowable suffering. You're going to bear all from now on? I see. You came all this way with everyone. Thank you. For freeing us all. For freeing me. You accomplished what I could not. You are never just a clone of myself. You're your own person, Lily. You've grown so much. It's time I should be going. I'll be watching over you. We'll always be together. With that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of Ender Lily, Quietest of the Night. That is ending C. At this point, we have completed the game. All items found, all rooms complete, all spirits unlocked. This game is a beautiful game. I enjoy this game very much. I'm Me just being a huge fan of Metroidvanias, I love this game. I find it somewhat stressful at times. But it is a truly fun and enjoyable experience to play through. And if you haven't had the chance to play through this game yourself, I honestly suggest you do. It's beautiful. The soundtrack is really good. The art style is gorgeous. It's to the point where even the creepy parts of this game that are so unsettling still look fantastic. Um, what I'm going to do is then the description of this video I'm going to post a link to a Google Drive folder these are a series of images that I use to help me 100% the game it'll be there to aid people it basically shows you where every object 
is in the game so you can complete all the rooms. It is very helpful. There's like two rooms I think in the whole thing that are inaccurate, but otherwise it's a great tool. Um, the game's fun. The game's beautiful. I even playing through it a second time. I like last played through this game in 2021 and so curtain down, I'm a middle school science teacher. And one day during my lunch break, a couple kids came into my room to talk to me and I was messing around just playing through the opening section of this game because it had been a while. One of the kids who's in my class saw the game and thought it was cool. So what he then did was every day during class, he would finish his work and in the last few minutes, he would ask to play it on my computer that I had in the classroom. That computer being my old setup. I would let him so long as his work was done and it was correct. And he's an A student in my class, so he always got his work done well. So he would go do his work and then hop on my computer for the last 20 to 15 minutes and play through the game. And even with me, having played through the game it was a really fun experience watching his reactions to all the enemies watching his reaction to getting hit by attacks from bosses the damage that it was doing it was fun and it reminded me how much i really like this game because i haven't played this since 2021 that was the last time i touched this game and it's a shame because this game it's up there with Hollow Knight for me in terms of some of my favorite Metroidvanias. It is done. At long last, for each a proper burial, Lily, take heart, you are not alone. The Blight may have taken them, but they are still watching over us. And I will never leave your side. Amidst a collapsed world, her words echo out. Thank you for finding your way to me. So, before I'm actually completely done, I want to go over a couple things. First thing, yo, knocked nine hours out of my 100% file this time. Let's go. <laughs> uh, if you're curious, this is the file of my student who beat the game and got the C ending. He did not 100% it, but hey, not bad. Not bad, dude. I want to go to resume. Because this room is still blue. Because once we beat ending C, the lost error room appears. Allows the recollection of one's unblighted form. So, with the lost heirloom, we are able. Let me go back here. With the lost heirloom, we are able. You may not access maligned memories. I'll explain what that is in a moment. If we equip the lost heirloom, we get. Unblighted Lily. I miss seeing this form of her. And you... God. It's crazy to think how much damage the Blight does. Unfortunately, this is the only room that will not turn yellow. Regardless of the fact that we 100 percent at the game. Let's actually take a look at this beautiful map of completed areas. This area might not be complete. I was under the impression that this area just doesn't turn yellow. But that might be incorrect. For you see. There's one item up there. Let me actually go put on one of my movement abilities real quick. Uh, 
I'm surprised. I totally thought I saw something twinkle on the ground. I did not know this was here. I genuinely thought that this room just doesn't light up. <gasps> wow. Okay. I think it's kind of bonked my head. I think I can do it with this setup. Give me one second. Because with this, this actually should be tr this should trivialize this trick. <laughs> one last amulet fragment. There we go. With this, we have 100% of the game. I actually didn't realize that there was an amulet fragment up there. That's my fault. Now, with all the trials and tribulations we have been through, there's only one thing left for me to show off. If we go to memories, all these memories allow you to refight all of our bosses. These are the final memories and cutscenes of the game. But here, we have maligned memories. This is a boss rush mode. Now note, this was added after I had originally beaten this game. This was added after the fact. But essentially, you fight every boss in the game back to back. Not all the small spirits, all of the big bosses. Which you can see, eight of them on screen. Let's give it a try. So Umbral Knight, as he's gotten stronger, his attack combo's gotten more, like, fancy. I'm not really giving this a super hard try, but I am max power at this point. If there's a time to try it, it's now. No, this is, once again, the first boss of the game. Not too hard of a challenge.
should finish it. Not quite. Oh my goodness. You're doing pretty good. You know, these are challenging. Ooh. Doing pretty good. Nice. Pretty smooth. We're having some pretty smooth runs of these bosses. I don't know who's next though. I'm assuming it's all. Oh, that's right, Silva. too much now. Good damage though. Keep up the damage. Oof. Oof. The Silva Backdash. Oh my god. <laughs> I was doing pretty good. The Silva Backdash would beat me up, though. But yeah. I think that's it for now. Uh, this game, I'm not going to sit here and keep doing the memory mode. Um, thing I never showed off was Bitebar modes. So you can make the game more difficult for yourself. You can make a cap of what level you can go to. You can cap what level you can take your spirits up to. You can make enemies hitting you, insta-kill you. You can turn the ability to prayer off, and then you can multiply your contact damage. You can make contact damage non-existent, or you can make contact damage ridiculous. Uh, contact damage is bad enough in this game, honestly. Uh, enemy damage multiplier, enemy HP multipliers, 
all types of stuff you can do to change. Make the game, in some cases, harder, other cases, easier for yourself. Uh, I guess that one I can't do, but the contact damage I can make easier. But, I digress. This has been a fun playthrough. I'm glad I got to show this game off. I'll catch you guys next time.